I look out the window. The world I can see isn't my world anymore. It's theirs, the Nazis. They've taken it away from me piece by piece. I can't ride in trams or cars like everybody else. I can't swim in the same water. I can't shop in Gentile shops. I can't walk anywhere without wearing a star on my chest. I can't. I can't. I can't do anything. I don't exist anymore. They've turned me into a nobody so that they can wipe me off the face of the earth. In Annexed, I've tried to imagine what it might have been like to be Peter Van Pels, the boy who for two years hid from the Nazis in an attic in Amsterdam with Anne Frank. What was it like to watch through a window as other Jews were rounded up and began to disappear? How might a young boy cope with the loss of his physical freedom? And what was it really like to live with Anne Frank? These are the questions that form the beginning of the book. But there was an even bigger question that worried me as I wrote this book. Was it right to turn a real person's life into a story? Especially when that story included an experience of the Holocaust. For me, we're at a turning point in the history of the Second World War. The people who survived it are dying. The real living experience has to continue on its journey from the stories and minds of those who were really there into our collective conscious and unconscious. When we read fiction, we engage with a story in a different way to studying history or biography. We imagine we were there. As one reader said, it's not just history happening in black and white on a screen anymore. It's in colour now, inside my head. For me, stories can help keep history alive. The memories crowd now, as thick and heavy as the dead. I let go of Mitty's hand so easily. I didn't know what was happening. There was no time to think. Peter, she said my name and then she was gone. They were all gone, our women, into the chimneys of this hell. I let go of her. I let go of everything in the end, even myself, but not yet. Let me tell you, let me tell you. Is anybody there? Is anybody listening? Writing Annexed has taken me two years, and what's really surprised me in the writing and researching of the book is not just the horror of man's inhumanity to man, but of the equal power that we have as human beings to hold on to our humanity when under threat. There was so much laughter in the Annex, and there was love in the camps, as well as brutality and hatred. In the end, the book gave me more faith in us as human beings, not less. In the face of an attempt to systematically destroy them, prisoners had different reactions. All of them can be understood. None of them should be seen as shameful and some of them were truly extraordinary and remarkable. Peter Van Pels experienced the worst and best of humanity in his short life. He knew and loved Anne Frank. He survived five months in the extermination camp that was Auschwitz. Towards the end of the war, he was sent on a death march from Auschwitz to Mauthausen in Austria. In Mauthausen, at that stage of the war, all categories of prisoner had a stamp on their paperwork. It read, Rukea unavunscht, and it meant, return not desired. In my book, Peter is not Rukea unavunscht. His existence does matter. I wrote it to give him and the millions of anonymous young men like him a voice, a story. If the book works at all, then as a writer, I'm just the mechanism for that voice, for providing a story based as closely as possible on biographical and historical fact. The book ends as it began with a question. Are you there? Are you listening? Because if we're not listening, how can we understand? And if we don't understand, how can we ever change anything? <laughs>